Thursday, August 10th, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at whether the empire of the city of London is collapsing. Yes, <laughs> um, it might uh, sound a bit conspiratorial, but uh, I think a lot of you have realized in the last three years that a lot of the things we're told uh, are completely untrue. And a lot of the things that uh, we know about are completely ignored. So before we go into that, I uh, just want to talk about distractions. Uh, there's a lot of distractions, of course, the last uh, two years or so, or uh, 18 months, or even uh, back, back to 2020. Uh, but uh, the latest distraction, of course, has been Russia and Ukraine and now China as well. They're supposed to be the uh, enemies of the Anglo-American Empire, if you want to call it that, or of the U.S. and the U.K. We're supposed to have the special relationship. I wonder uh, who it's special uh, for, really. But like today, for example, there's another distraction here. White House unveils ban on U.S. investment in Chinese tech sectors. And then below it says Sunak, the prime minister of the U.K., says it says ways following Biden on curbing tech investment in China. So it always looks like uh, the U.K. is following what the U.S. is doing. <laughs> and that's a very good distraction. That's a very good deception, in my opinion. And uh before we look into the uh, empire of the city, uh, the empire of the city and whether it's collapsing. And the empire of the city, of course, is related also uh, to the Vatican and to Washington, D.C. And that's why I wanted to touch up, uh, touch upon that, because I I've known for years that the United States became, well, they created uh, in 1871, a corporation uh, called the United States of America. It used to be these United States. And people always used to say, so what? Um, and also uh, the crime of 1873. What's the crime of 1873? Well, it, it's when they uh, limited the amount of uh, silver you could pay, pay for things, basically taking the U.S., off silver and putting it on gold, on a gold standard. And why is that important? Well, I think it has a lot to do with what's going on uh, or what has been going on for now. Well, it's 152 years since the United States became a corporation, 150 years uh, since uh, the, the great crime of 1873 uh, to do with silver. And uh, recently I was watching a, a Bo Pony uh, video. Some of you might watch him, some of you might not. He's got, he makes some very interesting points, but I was surprised that he, he played a clip of um, someone uh, called Jan Halper Hayes. And she uh, runs Republicans Abroad and she's based in the UK. She says in the interview that she she's uh, working for a, a task force for the, the U.S. Department of Defense. But what was really interesting is what she said about uh, President Trump when she when he came to visit the Queen of England. I think it was in 2018. So I'll play the clip now and let you. Uh, yeah, decide what you will about what she said. And I was really surprised uh, that she said that on GB News. So here it is. Because it was the Vatican, the Crown, and the U.S. that was part since 1871. And we were giving you our tax dollars. We were paying back. You know, we, forget this Tea Party and without taxation, without representation. We owed you a lot of money because you helped us in the Civil War. And so that is what Trump has now, he told the queen, I'm ending this. We're dissolving this corporation. 
We're going to go back to being a republic and we'll all be separate. The Pope wasn't happy. You should find the picture of him visiting the Pope. It took 650 planes to remove our gold from the Vatican Bank. I'm not very happy about it, Jan, to be perfectly honest. We could do with your money at the minute. <laughs> keep, it, keep it flowing, I say. Um, Jan Halper Hayes, really good to see you. Thank you so there you go. Uh, the other interesting thing is that in the last few days, and this uh, interview uh, on GB News, uh, that took place six days ago. I think it was on August 3rd. And uh, it's not surprising that now GB News is under investigation by the regulator. So here you go. And, and this just came out uh, two or three days ago. So they're, they're saying it's because they're employing a lot of politicians, that they're biased. But uh, could it be that uh, this woman let the cat, cat out of the bag? She mentions uh, the Vatican. She mentions the city of London, of course. And she, she mentions Washington, D.C. So I want to go over uh, here the U.S. corporation because there's some information here on the Internet. And this is from you have the right.com so this is what it says here and and it pertains to what that woman said in that interview at the end of the civil war congress reconvened and passed what was called the united states reorganization act of 1871 also known as the act to provide a municipal government for the district of columbia however this government was different it was structured as a foreign-owned corporation and called the United States, and it's in capital letters. That's important. It even adopted the Republic Constitution, but changed only one word. They changed the word Constitution for the United States to Constitution of the United States. Lawyers, they're really uh, clever. Uh, therefore, this change made the Constitution a possession of the government corporation and not the possession of the people. The only power this government had was to govern over matters of commerce within the District of Columbia. What we call state of or your state is actually a sub corporation of the United States corporation engaged in matters of commerce. This state is not to be confused with the union state, uh, your state, I guess in not in capital letters, which is part of the original pre-Civil War Republic. Therefore, the United States Corp is foreign to the United States as its geographic boundaries are restricted to the land area of the District of Columbia. This distinction has been recognized in numerous court cases before the U.S. Supreme Court. Don't take our word for it. Uh, read from the book Co Cooperative Federalism by Gerald Brown, EDD. The fact of the matter is almost all government entities are now commercial contracting contracting corporations of some some type complete with a tax ident identification number or TIN and and the full Dun and Bradstreet credit report don't believe it check out the the Dun and Bradstreet credit report for the Supreme Court in capital letters so there you go. I'm going to put a link to this below in the description. I've also heard that uh, the Houses of Parliament in the UK, uh, you can search and find them uh, on Dun and Bradstreet and also MPs, uh, people that are MPs in the UK. Uh, they are kind of corporations as well, and you can find them on Dun and Bradstreet. So it's really interesting. It's not just the, uh, the United States has been co-opted, but also the government of the United Kingdom that's been co-opted. And uh, so who's really behind it? Well, uh, there's a really good documentary. I watched it many years ago, and some of you might have watched it. And this is more to do with the modern day uh, British, uh, second British Empire. 
So it's called The Spider's Web, and I'm going to put a link to it below in the descri description, and I'm going to put it up in the cards. Uh, it says here in the beginning of the documentary, at the twilight of the British Empire, bankers, lawyers, and accountants from the city of London set up a spider's web of offshore secrecy jurisdiction uh, that captured wealth from across the globe and funnel it to London. Yeah, it comes through London, but uh, it's domiciled in uh, the tax havens like uh, Bermuda, Bahamas, Cayman Islands, uh, Isle of Man, Jersey, and many others. Uh, so that is very interesting. And uh, what do I think is going to happen? I is this uh, coming to fruition, this uh, end of this corporate corporate America, even maybe the corporate uh, UK? I don't know, but uh, I was just surprised to see someone on the mainstream, uh, GB News. Yes, they are kind of uh, considered um, <laughs> conspiratorial and far, far right, right wing here in the UK. And, and they're going after them, of course. But um, yeah, I think uh, it's very interesting, as I said. And there's another book I'm going to recommend because it, it shows to you that there's an American bank, well, American bank, uh, called J.P. Morgan. <laughs> and, and you might think, what do you mean uh, you went like this? Why? Well, because it's not really, its roots are not really in America. Its roots are in the city of London. And uh, the seeds were planted, but not by a Morgan, but uh, someone called George Peabody, who actually bank was a banker from I think Baltimore, but he settled in, in, in the city of London and uh, he's very famous here. He, he left a legacy uh, he, because the, he didn't have any heirs. So there's Peabody houses like uh, low income housing that's been uh, all financed for over, a, well, about 130, 140 years. Uh, by the Peabody Trust. It's very famous. Uh, so the book that I recommend, it's a big one. And, and I read this many, many uh, years ago, probably over 30 years ago, before I really started looking into things. But uh, um, be as it may, it's called The House uh, of Morgan. And it's interesting that the it says here, The Secret History of Money and Power. So by Ron Chernow. So why do I think uh, the bank J.P. Morgan is important? And by the way, uh, it was uh, J.P. Morgan's father, Junius Morgan. He came uh, to London to be, well, to become a partner with George Peabody. He was looking for someone to take over the business because he didn't have any children or any other relatives. Uh, so when Peabody died, Junius uh, became... Uh, the top partner and the the firm became Junius uh, Morgan and and Co or in Sons and it was still in London and there's a lot of speculation because during the uh, second half of the 19th century there's still a lot of uh, anti-Semitism uh, uh, a lot of discrimination against Jew Jews and the Rothschilds were the biggest financial power at the time so. A lot of people speculate that uh, the Morgans really uh, and Peabody before were doing a lot of business and they did a lot of business for the Rothschilds. It was kind, kind of like a front, but that's speculation anyway. Uh, and then um, J.P. Morgan, the uh, John Pierpont J.P. Morgan, he came to London as well. And it was only later that uh, they opened... Uh, an office in New York, and uh, yes, <laughs> and, and J.P. Morgan, of course, is still very important in the city of London. So uh, it's all very interesting. As I said, um, are we uh, near something historic, something like uh, apocalyptic? And and by ap apocalyptic, I don't mean the end of the world. It means the unmasking all this history that has been like hidden from us, uh, from <laughs> not all of us, because I've known this, but I, I thought it'd be interesting to bring this out right now because it, it looks like it's seeping through the mainstream. 
And what could it mean uh, financially for things? Well, it's very difficult to say, but it would be uh, it would be it would make what happened last year vis-a-vis Ukraine and what might even happen vis-a-vis China seem like a picnic. It could it would be monumental. It's part of uh, what uh, Howe and Strauss called the fourth turning. And I think we are in the fourth turning. If you don't know what the fourth turning is, I recommend you Google that and look into it. The last fourth turning was in the uh, 1940s. The previous was in the 1860s. And before that, the fourth turning was during the US Revolutionary War. There's always huge changes that take place. And uh, it might be something that could affect silver quite a bit because the coinage act of 1873 which is a couple of years after this corporation was formed and it's interesting that that woman is saying we've been paying our taxes to 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 really to the city of london not not to 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 the people living in the uk uh, what i would say is the people of the uk british people are not really benefiting from this it's only a a, a very small number of people uh, in the city of London, in the square mile, and the square mile, of course, is uh, is outside, really, uh, ju- the jurisdiction, the, the city of London is different than the rest of the UK. The jurisdiction of the Vatican is different from the rest of Italy. The jurisdiction of Washington, D.C. is different from the whole of the United States. It's not a state. So what I'm trying to say here, was this a great crime of 1873 uh, a way to uh, really uh, control the money of the United States Corporation what became the United States Corporation and uh, with that (laughs) impose like a gold standard on on the uh, United States Corporation very it's very possible so you can see that the repercussions of of this could be huge Uh, I think uh, Bix Weird talks about this, that silver has been manipulated for 150 years, and I think he's right. Uh, I don't agree with everything he, he, he speculates on uh, about the gold in the Grand Canyon. Um, am I saying that silver is going to go through the moon? It's going to become... Uh, uh, no, I, I just think uh, that it might become a lot more important because if uh, the United States Corporation... Uh, ceases to exist (laughs) Uh, if uh, someone defaults on all this debt this 33 trillion uh, and all the unfunded liabilities they're not uh, the liabilities of the people of the United States these United States but of the corporation if that happens uh, I, I could see the well the United States that should be the pre-Civil War Republic become a republic and use constitutional money again. So that's why I think it could be important for silver, but also for gold, even though gold was more important for the people who run uh, this empire, the uh, Anglo-American financial empire. So uh, there you go. We'll have to wait and see. But in the meantime, you're not going to hear much about this any anymore after that GB News thing, in my opinion. You're going to hear a lot of other distractions about China, Russia, and uh, the climate, of course. But uh, with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's 8.20 a.m. London time. Uh, we've got gold, spot gold at 19.20. It's up six dollars. The high's been 19.21, and I think uh, this level is very important because it was the top in 2011. And uh, I bet you that in 2011 the bullion banks went short massively, and uh, they have uh, yeah they have a lot of uh, shorts below 19.20. Or around 1920. Yes, they've closed positions out in the last uh, 12 years or so, 
but it's significant that number it means that maybe they're going to be covering here around these levels because uh, they were underwater on those positions but anyway um knowing what we know though and of course uh this uh story about the united states corporate corporation and the debt and the federal reserve as well the federal reserve is also a corporation um, I wouldn't want to have too much exposure to the debts of this corporation. Uh, anything to do with the Federal Reserve, if, if this is true. Uh, of course, it might not be true. And even if it's not true, you, you still will do well having gold and silver. That's my opinion. It has uh, worked well for thousands of years. Uh, where is uh, silver? Well, silver is up uh, 20 cents at 22.85, uh, just under 1%. Uh, the Dow future uh, is uh, up 200 points. The uh, NASDAQ 100 future is up 107, and the S&P is up 28. Uh, sterling is up a quarter of a percent at 127.53. The euro is up 0.4 at 110.20. The dollar is unchanged versus the yen, 143.82. And the dollar is down an eighth of a percent versus the Chinese U1 at 721.86. Aussie dollar is up half a percent, 65.58. Uh, the dollar is down 0.2 versus the Canadian dollar, just below 134. And the Kiwi dollar is up half a percent at 60.80. Uh, to the general commodities, and uh, I've noticed that na natural gas has uh, been rising uh, yeah, in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, it, it's risen about almost 50%, I think, the U.S. natural gas. So, And I also heard that um, the European, the TTF natural gas is starting to pick up, so we're going to have to keep an eye on, on those. Uh, anyway, back to the... Uh, general commodities so we got WTI crude up half a percent and that's at 84 uh, 30 so commodities and I've said that in the last few weeks that I think they're breaking out of that consolidation and it looks like it's confirming it right now of course it's not going to be a straight line these things uh, zigzag uh, the Brent, uh, Brent crude is up uh, half a percent as well. It's approaching 88. It's at 87.72. Uh, platinum is up 12 bucks, trading at 903. And high grade copper is up half a percent at 382.09. We'll finish off with the bond market. Uh, the 10 year US yield is at 403. That's up one basis point. And uh, the UK two-year yield is just above five. It's up 10 basis points. So there you go. With that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.